Mark, I was starting to think you ran off with the bird. Who am I kidding? I knew you couldn't resist the power stroke for long. Welcome back. Okay, you knew it was only a matter of time before the truck started talking. <laughs> and, without, and without Gary to talk to. Every, everything has to talk. Every <laughs> inanimate object must will communicate. You, will you pay a subscription for things to talk? Yes. You find anything, any <laughs> anything needs to talk. Everything needs to talk. All the flowers are gonna talk, <laughs> <on the> Mark. <laughs> hey, welcome back. Isn't it nice? It's lovely. Isn't it though? I, I'm, I'm just. And, like, so I'm not the only one that missed the truck. No. No. Oh, I missed the truck. Yes, I'm yes. I'm recuperating because the dog got out of the house. <laughs> so I'm just like, there's a busy street. Everything's yes. fine. Everything's fine. Okay. So yes, the truck is absolutely gorgeous. Okay, here we got to tell you what the plan is. Trish and I are going to drive over to where the Airstream is. We've got some cleaning supplies. We're going to get it cleaned up from my drive from Michigan to Florida. Mm -hmm. We want to share with you some of the uh, service repairs, yes. some of the upgrades, modifications that we've done to the Airstream because I think people are interested in kind of how we've tweaked some things. Mm -hmm. um, so while we drive over to the Airstream, we're going to send you back to Michigan where I picked up <laughs> Sorry. the Airstream in 20 degree weather, moved out of the bird, drove what? 1200 1300 miles you did so much mark a lot of driving you did week. so much and then um and then we'll meet you back at the airstream and we'll go through the service list that is the plan for this episode let's not wait any longer yeah. okay welcome back just uh just arrived at woodlands airstream and uh, eric's getting the keys to the to the to the rig and we're gonna go check out all these mods looks really good really good oh yeah and those rivets we did last time that's that's cool well, no. I yeah. do check on those make sure nothing's getting loose here mm -hmm. because if these ever loosen up these acorn nuts mm -hmm. here the wind will actually shake this yes. and kind of actually start yeah moving. man this is the big news right here yeah no disregard sticker i found a solution to fix that dent that's only going to cost me 15 cents Say that's, I'd say that's fixed. You can tell that panel's newer, but it looks great. It'll, uh, give it a little time, you know, after a year oh, okay, or so. Yeah. The sun will help kind of blend it all in together. Oh, yeah. Tried I, to. Oh, look at the camera up there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brand new camera. Oh, sweet. You have to tell me how that works. Yep. Yep. So we've got, uh, oh, I, got, I have the monitor in my office. I'll have to grab Okay, good. So I figured, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm getting the dent fixed, Probably yeah. not a good idea to not install a backup camera. They're, they're, they're so <laughs> handy. I mean, even yeah. if you're not even using them for a backup camera, you can use them as a re rearview mirror yes. when you're going down the road. So yeah. it's great. Or just checking on the bikes. Yeah, All sure. Kind of stuff. Okay. I'm towing again. Continue on Michigan 44 connector for three miles. Walk through the bird one more time, make sure it has everything, bring up the steps and get out of here. But holy cow, every time I do that, I think, wow, that was a lot of work. One thing which is interesting that I wasn't used to 
is just making sure everything's off the counters because with a motorized RV, with air ride at least, and I should speak for the bus, we could leave things like the coffee maker and the Berkey and stuff like that on the countertop, no problem. But, uh, but you know, towable RVs bounce. So stuff can fall down. So you have to make sure stuff that's important that can break is on the ground. This place is a mess. I, I didn't have time to put things away and the bird is substantially bigger than the Airstream. And a lot of this stuff isn't even coming with us. They're coming, it's going to Florida. So I'll deal with it. I'll deal with it tomorrow. Oh, I do love the bird. I really do. It's been fun. A lot of fun. I mean, this isn't our official goodbye. Our official goodbye would be at the museum, but still, you know, I'm packing up in the Airstream, so, you know, I'm trying not to get choked up. All right. Did you just get here? <laughs> what? Let's see if I can back this thing up. Do you think I still know how to back a trailer up? It's been a while. It's been a while. You might have lost it. I am cold from inside my core. Well, I heard you've been sleeping in a cold camper the right last... It's not so much sleeping. I'm, I'm all right sleeping. It's driving. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's brutal. I've done it. I've been there. It's, yeah. not, a, it's not a good look. I know now I know why everyone's going to Bucky's. Oh yeah? I got a pulled pork sandwich, I got a brisket sandwich, I got they have a jerky bar. I got two different flavors of jerky. <laughs> there's cookbooks in there. There's 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 everything you want. I mean it was it, it was it was that was not the Bucky's that you and I went to five years ago. Or seven years That's ago. Crazy. Hello. Hi, who's that? Oh, hello, Charlie. Yay! Look who it is. Hi. Hi. Oh. Yes, Dad is here. He's like, Dad, there's so many cats outside, <laughs> and I'm gonna catch them. <laughs> I just don't know how yet. Oh. Yes. That's a good boy. That's a good boy. There's black ones and brown ones and orange ones. The orange one is really getting to me, though. <laughs> He's gonna make me crack. Yeah. Oh my gosh. How are you doing? Such a long drive. Doesn't it feel nice to be here though? Yes, it Dude, does. You've arrived. It's warm. You're gonna have to give everybody a tour. Okay, we will. We will. I made like some fresh espresso and mm -hmm. I have cream and honey. You want me to make you a cold drink? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, and then we'll get started backing into this tricky driveway. Oh gosh. Oh, Bucky's beef jerky. Okay? <laughs> it's not a myth. Really? It's, it's a not, legend. It's a, not it's a myth. It's a legend. It's not a myth. All right. Everyone was talking to Bucky's, and even I was in a conversation Which about brisket, and I was like, you know, keep refrigerated. It'd, it'd be all right. Pickled by that. That one's garlic. You like garlic? What kind is this? I don't know. Not garlic. Not garlic. I'm gonna go not garlic. Okay. What do you think? Man. It's mm -hmm. pretty good, don't you think? Mm -hmm. It's pretty good. Oh, mm -hmm. the camera. Okay, check it out. So, let me start it. There you go. Watch this. So, what you can do, Caleb, if you want to turn this on, 
you just go running lights. Mm. And when you go to running light, like this, and see volume up. Oh wow. Oh wow. Look at that. Isn't that great? You. Now does it give you some like turning access points? No, no nothing like that. But okay. anyway, so that's kind that of cool. That's awesome. Wow. This is the question. This is kind of like alley access. And can we get the Airstream in these gates with the alley access? Don't spend too much time looking at the house because as you know from the cabin, we buy ugly houses. But it'll look great when we're done. But it's it's um, it's kind of like gingerbready right now. And um, most of the neighborhood has been completely refurbished, but there are still a few properties right next to us that have not. So anyway, this is the plan. Can we get the Airstream right there? So the bad news is it's just hard to visualize 55 feet and it's looking like this is going to be pretty difficult all right Barely. all right you ready yeah <clears throat> in order to get the airstream in i think you're going to have to start cutting in like right now because you're not going to make it past this side yep i got gotcha. you Okay, go really slow. What has the back end of your truck? I'm, I'm fine, but there's no way I'm gonna make this. Okay, you know what? You know what? what? We need to get these bikes off. I can make that turn, I just can't unwind the truck. So this is why I was thinking maybe the tra trailer valet might be a good application. Because it looks, oh, we can yeah. get the Airstream in here. I just can't oh. unwind the truck. Yeah, you mean with that little robot? Yeah. With the tracks? Yeah, those are cool. Okay. You're good. What are you thinking? I'm thinking we just bit. got we just got this thing fixed. That's what I'm thinking. All right, hey, let's, uh, where do we keep everything? Oh yeah, the chocks are up in the, the uh, old battery compartment. So the first thing you want to start doing is... Chalking up, baby. That's right. And hey, I'm blocking the street, so we gotta speed this up a little. Okay. Seriously? Oh, okay. There we go. Going to trust the little pen. I think we, where do we yeah. get that? Push it forward. There you go. There you go. Now go up. That's good. Yeah, look at that, Caleb. Look at that. A nice new foot. Doctor Shoals of of stabilizer feet. Can you uh, can you go grab the keys to that? Sure. The airstream they're hanging up. I, I was hoping you wouldn't find my Kool Aid stash. A little dewinterizing snafu here. I think the shower was left on, maybe so when they came in here to turn on the shower, so water would come out of there, which is good. Run water through there. I probably wouldn't have thought of that. No, what if they didn't turn it off? So, yeah. Just leave that like that. What I'm slightly concerned is that there's so much clear water coming from back over here, and I'm wondering where that clear water is coming from. Hopefully we have some towels. I don't know if we do. Oh my gosh. He dumped that out. Luckily, the trash can was there. Look at all that water. Oh my gosh. That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we gotta do, Caleb, is we gotta get air conditioning in here or we can't survive. So, under. <laughs> it's turned into our reality. Too. It really has been. So, we need to get under here and we need to. Oh, what? They put a door here? Well, the door's always been there. 
The, the door has not always been there. The door has definitely always been there. No, I literally... I'm telling you, the door's been there. Oh, yeah, that door, maybe. Okay. But we got to unscrew these things, and the servo is under here, and the servo charges the GX50 right here. And I, I think I might have the Cat5 connected in the wrong port, and that's why it's not sending a signal to let the inverter invert and then let the shore power shore. Then let's get a screw gun. Okay, so if you're wondering why this cat five got cable got taken out it's because we had an open ground at the kyd bungalow and because i had an open ground it wasn't sending power into the rig and of course i didn't know about the open ground until i had tested a few other things one of them was disconnecting this uh cat five cable and when i put it back maybe i didn't put it in the right port but now I figured out that I had open ground in the outlet. And so I changed outlets at the bungalow. And then, um, and then we got it up to 14.4. So I know I have enough power now. So let's see. Oh, am I in the wrong one? Yeah, I'm in the wrong one. Let's see. Yeah, I bet I'm in the wrong one. I just didn't let it come Okay, let's see. Boom. As soon as we change the port, setting a signal back. It's now an absorption, and uh, I will turn on the AC. Try so to now, turn it oh, off. Oh, AC has an air because it probably tried to turn on when it didn't have power. So we'll just cycle that. <sighs> All right, hey Caleb. Yeah. Let's go get that trash. Empty out the trash can out there, and put the trash can back in here in case it starts leaking again. Well, let's just unplug the water. Let me. Let's do. Let's. Well, no, I have to get the system. I have to get this antifreeze through the system and not going into this. So I still have to run through this tube. So why don't we do this? Why don't we open up the sinks, both sinks, and turn it on slowly so that if it does leak, it's not gonna create a big mess and we can, and we can, and, and hopefully we can drain all the antifreeze out of the system. Once we get the antifreeze out of the system, I can remove this tube and hook up the water filter. Okay. Look at that. Isn't that crazy? That leaks. It's leaking back there. Alright, that's good. It's too much. back and I didn't have they didn't have the same fittings but they had these fittings that don't require the compression tool which I didn't want to have to go get so these just kind of thread in and compress so uh, actually I think these look a lot better anyway so anyway it is it is actually I confirmed that it is missing the o-ring inside there so who knows where that went but hopefully this works because I really really want to get this rig in working order again I might have had just a barely, barely enough PEX line to make that work, and I'm still not entirely convinced. I don't think that this plastic piece got pushed into the PEX far enough to handle the vibration and, and bouncing that I know is going to occur. So if this works now, wonderful, but I still think I've got to replace this PEX line, get the right brass fitting, get this crimping tool, and crimp it. It's the only thing that's going to make me feel comfortable. I got it in there, but it just doesn't feel right. Hey, Caleb. Yeah. Can you turn on the water slowly? Yep. All right, you turn it off. Okay, it's just a colossal waste of time and money. So I'm going to turn off the air conditioning. We're going to turn off the water. I'm going to get the right PEX connections, and we'll come back and see if we can figure this out. But we are now behind schedule. Um, All right, you hold this for me. Yeah, we're this. Okay. <sighs> Back. Got the supplies I need. Got the PEX clamp tool. I got the elbow with the brass, opposed to the plastic, which I really like. And the same fitting here. So. Let's see. Let me unscrew this. Okay. See that? So that water fitting is going to go right in there like that. 
And look at that, it's not gonna leak at all because it's got the little rubber grommet in there. I think we are ready. To turn on the water? How's it going? No leaks. Really? Yeah. Alright, I'll turn it full blast. Oh yeah, turn it on all the way. Okay, we're in good shape now. Nothing's leaking. Much better results. We came with the right tools. I think I was just a little grumpy yesterday because I wasn't really expecting all of this and didn't really have time for a repair and we were super hot and hungry and so today we showed up not being hungry with the right tools, knowing we were gonna have a project and it went it went pretty smooth. So Swimming. nothing swimmingly as Caleb says. So now that we've flushed all the pink out of the system, I've got to go under Caleb's bed and get hot water going or get water going through the hot water heater again. And then we're going to test the hot water heater. We'll put it on. Is it off? Uh, yeah. Whew. You can hear hot water through there. Ooh, is there yeah. still water? Is there still pink stuff coming through there? That's crazy. It just stopped working entirely. Unbelievable. I've got water flying out of the inlet valve right here coming into this whole system when I unplugged it, the water just shot out. So I know that's working. So the only, so I bypassed the water filter now with this tube and this is the cold water line to the sink. And this is the valve that turns that off right there. So if, if I've got water coming out of this, there's no good way to do this, but if I got water, catch it. If I got water coming out of here when I turn this valve on, then that's one last thing here, let's see. Okay, there's water there. You see that? There's water right there. So like literally, somehow, the faucet just got clogged. <laughs> somehow. Have you ever seen like something that would clog a faucet just through dewinterizing? You know, I have, Mark, I have. And it could be some um, possible debris in the water heater. First thing I want mm. you to do is pull off the aerator off the tip. Okay. Um, on the nozzle. Okay. okay. Look at that. Can you see that? Picture. All right, let's get that back in there. Is this marginally entertaining? Because uh, in, in most cases, when I edit this stuff, I edit a lot out of it because I just can't stand the thought of bringing someone through this process. But at least, at least we're reaching some levels of satisfaction that we're getting it to work. Okay, so now I'm back to where I was an hour ago, where I simply wanted to just make sure that the hot water heater works. So I was going to flip on the propane first, hear the tick, 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 make sure it kicks on. I'm going to be here for a little bit cleaning up so I can make sure I have hot water. Okay, so, there we go. It turned on before I could even get out here. So now we just wait to make sure that works. Come on out. <laughs> okay, no, um, what? I kind of made a mess. Oh, really? Well, kind of. I mean, oh, kind of. a lot happened here. A lot happened. Well, yes. <laughs> So, oh my god. It's not so bad. Oh dear, but. it's not bad, but it's bad. Okay, it might be kind of confusing to some why we would be like coming in visiting. And that's because we're actually at the KYD bungalow 
renovating ish. Well, well I kind of thought they saw, depending on how the edit goes, me trying to back the trailer into that property yes. and realizing that it it, it was a no go. go. But anyway, but that's kind of like why we're visiting. Yes, we wanted to get it set up with sewer and water and electrical in an actual RV site so that we can get it ready to go because we are preparing to go on a trip north. Yeah. So that's what will be happening. Not the next video, but the one after that. But there's something new. Okay, have you like? Oh, well, it's all plastic wrap. Well, stuff. I didn't want to take all that away because I figured you might want to do all that. Thank you. That's yeah. like the super fun part. Anyway, this is a ninja. I don't know what kind it is. We'll 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 put links. But at first we were a little nervous like this handle it comes out cool so far. Like, watch, I did do that. Isn't Woo! That, cool? that is so fun. Yeah. I'm so excited because I've never had like an oven here. And mm -hmm. then when I was using the air fryer and the bird, mm -hmm. I was like, this thing is revolutionary. Which, I say that, but someone wrote in and said, I think an air fryer is just a convection oven. <laughs> Which technically our microwave was, but um, I never could get it to do what just, I can do with They're just not as fryer. hot and crispy. Yeah. And they're, I, just, I just don't like them as much. But yeah, so anyway. I'm sure so there's good ones. Don't I'm sure there's really good ones. And I bet there's people that were really good at mastering that mm -hmm. convection microwave. Yeah. Um, but I am pumped about this. So like always though, we're gonna try things for a while, live with them you know, mm -hmm. put them to the test yeah. and then we'll say this was a thumbs up or maybe we shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Look at my tiny little, my tiny little pants work in here. Oh, that's awesome. Isn't that cool? So satisfying. Woo oh my gosh. That right there is a chicken nugget holder. <laughs> chicken nugget holder. <laughs> what? Would you mind to hold my chicken nugget? Yeah. Thank you. Can we just turn it on just to see? Yeah. Yeah. Start. Start. Preheating. Air roast. I hear it going. It's like a little plane. That's going to be fun. Yeah, that, that's cool. I'm interested to see if it heats up the area too much or what. Ooh, I'm too. A light. I'm also interested to see like where does it ventilate? Like how does it vent out the back? Is there ventilation out the back? I think there is. See? Love this shade right here. One of my favorite things. Okay, so let's talk about some of the stuff that we've done outside. I've got my little pointing. <laughs> okay. Um, this right here is the Kuat Transfer 2 bike rack. This is RV certified. And as you can tell, there's fewer... Oh, it went all the way down. Right there. There's like fewer stuff going on. Less plastic. Very simple and it still has that mechanism that prevents it from, it's not really tight right now, but prevents it from shaking inside the hitch receiver, which I like. Um, really easy to throw a bike on this thing, and I love how you don't have your bikes, it stows away pretty easily. Probably the only thing I don't like about this is that if you look right down here, there is an Allen wrench mechanism that tightens it instead of the knob like on my other Kuat rack. So if you lose that Allen wrench key, which I think I have in here, you could be out of luck. So I don't like that I have to keep track of a tool. I think that was a bad design. Everything else, I think it was uh, worth it. They come in a two bike and a three bike option. So I got this at e-trailer. I'll provide the link down below. A lot of people have asked, is there an update on the bike rack video? Because as you know, as Trish said, we. We do these things, but we don't say we like them or not because we don't know. But then if we keep them and we're on our second one, two thumbs up. This is the best. We already talked about the dent at, uh, at when I picked up the Airstream, but I just think they did a terrific job. It looks fantastic. Um, a lot of people asked how much it cost. This was $5,500 because they had to take this piece off and this piece off and redo this stripping all the way to wherever they cut it off, maybe behind this rail. You have a picture. I have a picture, but anyhow, so that's why. Um, you know, no disregard sticker. And then- But that was an uh, insurance claim. You might want to share. We did file a claim on that and we have a $250 deductible. And then right up here is that backup camera. And I've always kind of been, an I, I won't say anti backup camera, but I've never really used them before because I didn't want another screen in the cab of the truck. We ended up, uh, I got this uh, backup camera at e-trailer. Again, I'll provide the link down below. Um, the reason I went with it is because it has a really cool four inch screen that I can keep in the middle console. It has a 12 volt, yeah, 12 volt, like a, like a, like a DC cigarette lighter plug. 
and I can keep it all on my middle console. And I have found, I've backed up three times already and I have forgotten to use it twice. Oh, I should probably look at this little backup camera. <laughs> used to having one so I didn't look at it so I don't know if it's something I'm gonna use all the time but I think it's one of those things that when you know you, when you really need it and you're by yourself and you want to know who's behind you you've got it and in those situations I'll just bring it out of the middle console and I'll set it on the dash and I think it'll be fine okay because it is a rolling what do you call it like a tornado or hurricane like it's some... crazy inside the back of a yeah. RV okay when you're going down the road so yeah. what I um, always consider is that the pipes can kind of start to shimmy undone mm -hmm. and then you go about your business you start washing dishes wash your hands and then you have a slow leak I always like to mm -hmm. keep some kind of container underneath the sink so this one slips in just like that mm -hmm. and that way if anything spills That's it's all contained idea. but it also is my little like I keep all these things now yep. things that I don't use all the time like obviously I'm not gonna use stainless steel wipes all the time so yep. those go in the precarious situation mm -hmm. but the things that I actually use just go boom boom like this and then they're contained they're not messing up the bottom of this because this is where the trash goes and it's constantly yeah. like getting dirty and I don't I don't know I don't like it all rubbing up against something yep. that I can't fix so that goes there trash goes under here and then you've got it all set and if the water leaks it's no big deal this stuff yeah. is not going to be harmed by a little water leak and then you're not going to totally demolish underneath your sink okay we said we would mention a couple of the upgrades we did last season that we really like and um you know i know the cushions look a little sparse when you look in here like there's no back cushion and we took away the corner cushions it's just what we found is that we weren't using the dinette as much because we weren't sitting there because of the cushions and then we would put stuff here when we're traveling and then we had just this it just got cluttery and the table was too big so we actually used the same table we had but we have woodlands cut it down and then we trimmed it with this aluminum which i think looks pretty nice and then when i saw this i said hey that looks great why don't we do it over here and so we did we had added the aluminum trim here and then we just go like this and the table is great for working. And, oh, by the way, we took the slider off too because the slider always made it wobbly. Now, when we tighten it down, now the table is solid. So, for instance, I can work here on my laptop if I want the laptop close. I can work here. Caleb and I can play chess like this. <laughs> I can move it in. Like, I just think that a smaller table that doesn't slide is way better. I know this isn't like Trish isn't It swivels. Love it. People might not understand. It turns, but it used to go like this too, and it could never yeah. really be held it was in on place. Tracks that would go out and in, and so therefore it would like do this all the time. All the time. It wasn't. It wasn't fun. I like it sturdy. But the other thing we did last year, if you remember, is we moved to the 12 volt Dometic fridge, which we love. In fact, we love it so much we put it in the bird. Um, a lot of people are asking me how much wattage it draws. Dometic told me 50 watts. That's like the equivalent to a laptop but um, I'm still trying to get some real world numbers for you on that. I think what I'm gonna have to do is turn some things off and, and play around with it. But what I hear is 50 watts and uh, it's 12 volt, which means you don't need a big fancy batteries. Um, you don't need an inverter. It's on all the time, just like all your other 12 volt appliances. And for me, I'm really surprised how deep it is and how wide, even though it looks small and sleek, I haven't lost a ton of groceries because that happens mm -hmm. in RV land and um, refrigerators will just kind of poop out on you once in a while. But this guy hasn't and it's surprising how many things I can get in it. It's been great. I, I, there are really two complaints that I do have. Um, one is when we open it, it's like a vault. It just things come piling out of it. <laughs> These shelves are not tall enough and so you put any like anything here like a mayonnaise jar and it just it just comes over and then there's no like trish and i are gonna have to go get some uh tension rods mm -hmm. and put our own tension rods up here there's nothing to hold anything back that's one complaint and then the only other complaint that i have is it would kind of be nice and set the light on top because if on a, on a fridge this narrow you use a lot of the shelves i wish the lights were down the sides oh so that wow that would be good everywhere where were you in the planning I know because once you fill up the top you lose your lighting for the whole fridge so but these are really big really big and very nice um so absolutely no regrets i'd do it again in a heartbeat but those are my two complaints and i think we could probably solve both of those problems ourselves and i just love the style of it i mean i think it clean looks it's nice, nice. It's, clean. it's done i think that concludes our modification and upgrade so like i said we we're going to do a gear video to help everyone prepare 
pull their rigs out and, and make it a great summer. Get on the road. This year, get on the road. So we've got that coming up and then we're hitting the road. So we have our first trip that we wanna share with you is we go up the east. We're gonna be everywhere this year. We've got uh, three national parks we've never been to. We've got some other national parks in Utah that we're going to uh, complete to finally complete the Mighty Five because we've only done four out of the five. That's and not then, towards. That's not till towards. That's not the toward end the end of the, of the season. But this is a big. This is a big travel year for us, and we're yeah. we're excited. We're excited to be back in the airstream. We loved the bird, uh, and if you missed last weekend's video, that bird is going to the Hall of Fame RV Museum in Elkhart, and it'll get set up there in the summer. We'll keep you posted, and then um, we got a whole bunch of events and meetups and all sorts of fun stuff. Yay! So that's it. We're back in the Airstream. Hello, Airstream. If you're looking for gas for only a buck fifty-nine, you can still get it at Taco Bell. That's it for this episode. Tune in next Sunday for more KYD. We're about to go kayak. I think it's like a three-hour tour. Does this mm -hmm. sound familiar? Yeah. Three <laughs> and, uh, hour tour. And uh, we're just grabbing our sunscreen and we're gonna roll out. I love doing new things in new areas because you get to see a completely different part of town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And hopefully um, the kids are, you know, Victoria and Duncan are gonna be able to see mangroves and yep. water because they've never seen anything like that before. And Carson, Carson's here. Carson's here. And you know this guy. You know this So it's spring break. Carson's flown into town, flown into town. You like it here, Mikora? So nice. Yeah, pretty good. We've got some uh, fresh blood to introduce you for KYD. Okay. This is uh, you know, this is Duncan. A couple. I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise known as hashtag Who's Duncan? <laughs> <laughs> now you know. There he is. Captain here has picked up a few things right away. I'm impressed. He's already referring to Caleb as Captain Crunch, so that didn't take him long. And uh, and then he really likes Trisha and Tori's enthusiasm. He says something, and then Trisha goes woohoo, and he looks over and he's like, oh, I, I like that. I think I think he uh, I think most people do, most captains don't get immediate uh, engagement when they're just simply saying where they're going to go. So there's that. And uh, otherwise, it's pretty pretty cool. His name is Captain Yak. Captain. Sorry, Captain Yak, yak.com. And we're out here off of St. Pete and he's gonna take us out to the mangroves. And uh, it's, these kayaks are fantastic and this is a lot of fun. So we thought we would end the video this way. <sighs> okay, that is it for this episode. We just thought we would wrap up with a little Florida fun and uh, stay tuned for some travel episodes the week after next as we hit back the road and then we go all sorts, we go through Georgia and wow, so North Carolina, South Carolina, Ohio, Michigan to the west, hey, Utah, this... Oregon, Washington. This is Captain Yak and it was only $35 for three hours. I think it was great. It's great. He's great, a lot of information, wonderful peaceful ride through the mangroves, ends up at a beach. Highly recommend.